All right, let's get to the good stuff. The reason we wanted to, to bring you in is to to basically show everyone that you shouldn't be the most hated person in motorsports right now, and that's to show a, everyone you strong, show everyone you have a loving I'm side. Sure. I'm not saying that. The Daryl the Daryl Walter particle. Okay, first of all, I got to know why did you write it. Oh, it's such a long story. Do you want Do you want it chronologically? How do you want it? We want it chronologically and in a two and a half minute version. Okay. So, uh, actually, working on the story for a little bit. Um, when you talk to people who ma of matter in this industry, and by that I mean people who spend money, purchase things, have to sell, you know, in, in high pressure situations, when you talk to them about what my job is, which is to write about the sport at a much higher level than, you know, Brad's penalty yesterday. Like, I don't get I don't weed into that stuff. I'm looking at things at a much higher level. When you talk to people of matter in the top five things that need to be changed or fixed, that booth comes up every time in the top five. Everybody says it. So working on it for a little bit, um, really I felt like the pressure was getting turned up on me from outside people saying, um, how long are you going to ignore this? How long are you going to ignore the, you know, the elephant in the room? You know what everybody's talking about. You know what everybody's talking about. So the story was actually supposed to run the day after Martinsville, but it got held because of the schedule coming out. And I had some, I write a column every Monday. And so I wrote a column instead on what was, you know, I thought of what was going to happen with the schedule. So it got held a week. Um, in that time, I was very clear with Fox that I was writing the article, and at no point Fox maintained and never came off the line that no announcement regarding talent was scheduled. They never at any time said that to me. They never at any time said, he's going to retire next week. You don't need to write anything. You know, you don't, you don't need to talk about the elephant in the room because it's going to be fixed next week. And um, so when you when you approach them, this is for, for our knowledge and our listener mm -hmm. base audience, when you approach them and say, I'm writing this article about your booth, mm -hmm. are you doing that to give them a chance to comment yeah. and obviously to give you an idea of what that means? And, and so yes. when they're so when yes. they're telling you we don't have any plans, then you got to move forward with what you and your boss think is, the, is yes. a relevant article. Yes. And, and it, it was a relevant topic and it was relevant. Um, I, I, I was talking with some other reporters this week, and, and we lamented that we don't really get a chance to write and report about the things that actually are happening. And, you know, you can't really show how the sausage is made all the time because then people will stop talking to you. It was my understanding that DW had been encouraged to announce his retirement at Daytona, and he resisted and did not do that. And now it was my understanding, and, and nobody corrected this, that it was going to be at Charlotte Motor Speedway in May. And I felt, and, and the people, the pressure, the, the, the various elements of this industry, the product each week was untenable. And the sooner he announced his plans, I felt that we could, everyone could just move on. The, you would not, you, you would not watch the broadcast and just sit there and roll your eyes and complain. And I, I just felt like it would calm it down if he announced and, um, if he went and got ahead, if he went ahead and did it. And because now I think that people, and I think that you're seeing that, whether it was from my article or simply because he's retiring, this, gr this overwhelming, you know, love for DW that has come out of nowhere when for, the last four years, it's been it's, hate. It's been hate. It's yeah. been total hate. Yeah. So now this guy's <laughs> on his victory lap, which is wonderful for DW. It was not meant to be disrespectful. The tone was flippant, um, but I feel honest, and I feel that every critic who has had something to say, not one of them has said I was wrong. I feel like um, the timing was obviously terrible and regretful. But you didn't know that. But I maintain that it any point Fox had said to me that he's retiring next week, he's going to announce it next week, if at any point they had said that, then either the article probably would not have been written at all and or looked much differently. 
Um, because then I, I would have obviously written it as more of a send off and less of a critique. I've been accused of character assassination and things like that. I don't think I talked at all about his character. I acknowledge DW's lifetime, you know, service to his sport. I acknowledge he's an ambassador. I, am, I acknowledge he's a dignitary. And I thought the critique was of the overall performance of the booth. It, I don't think that I at anywhere said DW is a hilljack. You know, I don't, right. I don't like. I think I just said what what everybody says, and I you know, and I unfortunately for me, nobody wants to come out and and say you know she's right because you can't. You know, it's it's hard to do that, and so I take it all alone, and I I I do regret the timing. I very much do, but. Um, I almost, uh, you know, you you wonder if you wonder people's motives sometimes, and maybe because I, I got calls. I was not in Texas. I was doing NCAA stuff. I got calls starting Friday in Texas from people who said, "We heard you writing about the booth on Monday." Word was out. I mean, word was out, and nobody ever stepped up and tried to stop it. And you got to wonder why. Yeah. You have to wonder why people let that go. Is this the most crap you've ever mm. caught over an article? Uh, I got a lot of crap over some Alonzo article I wrote. I remember yeah. that a couple of years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a couple of years ago, that one was a biggie. Um, <laughs> I've just fair. seen you personally attacked, and that pisses me off because these same people that are saying you were a a, a shit are are being a shit to you. Well, that, that's it's crazy. Another conversation we've had is it's it's like the articles become Hillary's emails or something. It's like you know everybody is screaming at me. Not everybody. If you actually look and you go through it. The support is far more in agreement. It's just that the people who are offended, and, and that's more what it is. They're, they're offended at the timing and the tone and the quote-unquote disrespect that they believe I showed DW. Um, those people are just louder. They're just, you know, the, whether it's because of who they are in the sport and how many followers they have, those people are just louder. I think that you've seen for at least four years – the general public has complained weekly about the, the booth, and it's not my job to protect the booth. You I don't want to go off on a tangent, but Dave Moody wrote an article, basically. I heard. And it, it was so hypocritical, though, of who he is in the media, because on Sirius, he talks to fans like they're the dumbest people to ever call into a radio show. And then he turns around and attacks you for basically saying what you thought was the truth and what a lot of people are saying. I mean, TJ, was there anything in the article you didn't agree with? <laughs> yeah, cut this out, Jason. <laughs> they're, 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 he's chicken <laughs> shit, Jen, is I what that means. I mean, I, I think, you know, I think there's a lot of points in it and stuff, but I think, I don't think the timing was very fair. Yeah, the timing's fair. terrible. I mean, yeah, it's not really, yeah, the it's timing's not really fair terrible. on the timing, so... But um, also, should it? But but when you counter that, so what? Should I have written it four years ago? I'm gonna need to see your emails. <laughs> <laughs> like for me, it's a private server. The for, timing's terrible. For me, there were two yeah. things in there I didn't like. I didn't like the Mike Joy reference. I didn't like the Michael Waltrip reference. I felt like it was a DW piece, and then you were kind of spinning me out there, and I was like, I don't. So, is there anything if you had to write it again that you would leave out? Fox wanted. Fox specifically asked that I mention their other talent as an FYI. They were like, well, could you at least, you know. Talk so all the heat wasn't on DW? It wasn't meant to be that way. I understand that's how it reads. It was meant to be an overall um, critique of, of the entire product. And I, I hear what you're saying on, oh, you, you know, you put Michael in there for no reason. But the reality is, is that DW on that program probably brought Michael in there. And the reality is that critics and, and, and audience complainers oftentimes complain about the Waltrip brothers. They link them together. They don't, they don't separate them. That's why he's in there. The, th the part on Joy is, you know, it's his job to run the booth. He's the, you know, he's the, he's the, the play caller of the booth. And it's a, you know, he's lost all ability to really do that the way that he's trained and skilled to do because it's more of a romper room. You know, I, I think that the last two weeks have been better shows. I thought Sunday at Martinsville was better. And I thought not Martinsville, Sunday at Texas was better. And I thought this Sunday at Bristol was better. 